Where is he going? Uh, we'll go. Oh, thank you, Assistant Commissioner. Uh, thank you, and good morning, everybody, uh, and uh, welcome to this uh, this press release uh, by SAPOL today. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, the Minister for Police and also uh, Mr. Steve Domini uh, to this uh, conference today. And I'd like to start uh, perhaps by showing a, uh, some short footage here uh, on the screen. So perhaps I'll refer you to the screen first of all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Hey, what is your location? And I was a holiday home um, near the Bowie on the York Peninsula at that time, and we we're actually heading home. Well, it was picking up speed. I believe we we're going from the 60 to the 80 zone. I tried calling there, and I vividly remember seeing the car kind of hesitate. And there was there was no no answer, and, and the truck didn't slow down. Uh, as I was the officer uh, in charge, and I was also on call that weekend. And then the car went. Why didn't you give way? And then the truck still didn't slow down. What made you think that you could beat the truck? And my work phone rang and it was Troy. He just said to me, oh, Jane, she's just looked up at me. I think I've killed her. There were reports that there was a death at the scene. So that's your first indication that something's not right. Uh, it was quite a hectic scene. Wait, Put the telly on to the go. news. The Channel 7 helicopter was above of the intersection and uh, at that point there I'd seen the white Commodore. A person has died following a shocking crash at Port Blankville this afternoon. I knew it was her car. Yeah, I was at work and my mum came to tell me there's something and I just wish I could tell differently or say differently. Okay, good morning. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, I've seen that several times already and, and that vision still uh, still has an impact on me and this is what we're hoping um, will happen uh, with uh, members of the South Australian community, particularly leading into the uh, into the Easter weekend. Uh, the Easter weekend, when we talk about road statistics and lives lost and things like that, um, is the period from Thursday through until Monday. Uh, this is the story of uh, Crystal Domini, who's uh, an 18-year-old vibrant young woman uh, who was actually not picked up in the lives lost over the Easter weekend in 2017 because her death occurred on, occurred on a Tuesday as she was travelling home from York Peninsula when her vehicle collided with a truck uh, near Port Whitefield, um, killing her. Um, in the last five years, we've lost uh, seven lives on South Australian roads over the Easter period. Um, six of those have occurred in regional areas and the other one has occurred in the metropolitan area. Today we're releasing a, another road safety campaign um, specifically designed to um, have people think about their travel this Easter. It's a story about Crystal uh, and how uh, her life was lost and the, and the ripple effect and the impact that, that has had not only on her family and her father Steve is here today, uh, um, but certainly everybody else involved uh, in, that, uh, in that crash and um, uh, I guess the relationships and people in the relationships with Crystal and Steve's family, the emergency services who attended at the time. This podcast is the second uh, podcast that we have done. Uh, it is also a video presentation which runs through uh, the lead up uh, to the crash um, and then the consequences of the crash and the consequences um, and opportunities lost uh, since Crystal uh, lost her life back in in 2017. Uh, it's a very, very powerful story um, about um, paying attention uh, on the roads. It's a very powerful story to young South Australians in particular um, that please, we just need you to be so careful on the roads, particularly uh, if you're not experienced in driving on regional roads, and that applies to everybody. Um, but it is very much around making sure that you stay safe on your roads, that you wear your seatbelt, you don't drink and drive, don't speed, all the usual messages that we have around staying safe on our roads. And um, what I would like to say um, at the outset is, is that 
Um, this podcast uh, wouldn't have been possible um, without uh, Steve's permission and certainly his suggestion uh, to, to actually put this podcast into play. Um, we are indebted to you uh, and your family, um, Crystal's friends, to the emergency services uh, for going out on a limb here and showing um, such incredible bravery and courage in actually pulling uh, this podcast and this video series together. You will see um, and you will hear the, the anguish, um, the despair, the sorrow um, of what losing a life um, does to the people involved uh, and the relationships of the people involved on a life lost now road. And you'll see this, the story of Crystal and the emergency services and, and the trucking company people that are involved right through this process. And I defy anybody uh, not to be impacted uh, by the messages uh, that are in this um, in this podcast and this latest road safety messaging. Uh, it is a very powerful story, and like I said, I'm indebted to Steve, uh, to you and your family, um, for being so brave to actually bring this to us and allow, allow us to hopefully make a difference to um, the lives of people. If we can save one life on our roads, um, I think it's it's um, it's been worth it. I'm um, also just before I hand over to the minister, who will then uh, hand over to, to Steve to say a few words. I'd also just like to thank um, my people uh, within SAPOL from the various areas who've also been uh, involved in pulling this podcast and this road safety campaign together. They've done an amazing job. Uh, they've also put in a lot of personal um, time and effort, and I know that there's some long lasting relationships that they've formed with these people as well, which just goes to show um, that larger ripple effect. Um, that tragedies like this have on everyone who's involved. So uh, thank you. I'll hand over to the Minister. Um, thank you, Acting uh, Assistant Commissioner and, and to Steve. Um, firstly, the, I want to make a special recognition of the courage of Steve Domani. Um, I've watched this podcast. It kicked me in the backside and for anyone in the public who has an opportunity over the coming days or weeks, I strongly encourage you to watch this as well because it's a reminder and a poignant reminder that behind every fatality there is a story. And I urge everybody who is embarking on their journey this weekend to remember what your story may be if you make a decision that costs your life. Think about your family and think about the story that they will tell about your decision. Think about your friends, your loved ones, your work colleagues, your mates and down at the sporting clubs, what they will tell of your story that may involve speeding, that may involve inattention on the road, that may involve alcohol or drugs leading to your death. Because your story is what will be told by your loved ones if you make that poor decision. Now, South Australians have every reason and every right to enjoy a long weekend. It has been a really extraordinary period of time, certainly from before Christmas when it comes to COVID and losing our Christmas period to a large extent, many people being isolated, many people being sick and a lot of disruption at the start of this year. So you've got every right as a South Australian to enjoy this weekend but you have to come home safe. And you have to make sure that decisions that you make on the road don't stop someone else coming home safe as well. Because um, this weekend, this weekend, this long weekend is incredibly important, but um, make it count for the right reasons. Make it count for the right reasons. Um, before I hand over to, to Steve Domini, um, can I again thank Steve and his entire family um, for the courage that they have shown and the courage that they continue to show in being able to tell their story so publicly. It's also a reminder about the impact that um, fatalities on our roads have on our emergency services, on our police, on our firefighters, on our SES and CFS volunteers because those for, and, and, and our, um, of course, um, ambulance paramedics. These, these <coughs> emergency services workers are the immediate first responders. They're the ones that attend immediately and deal with the extraordinary consequences of both death and serious injury on our roads. So, um, Steve, I'll hand over to you. 
So ladies and gentlemen, Steve, is, uh, for your questions, if you'd just like to ask uh, Steve, come forward, please. Thank you so much for being here today. Can you just explain to us, I guess, why you wanted to do this podcast? If you sit down and watch the news and that at night and you see accidents, injuries, and then you always think that it'll never happen to you. But it did happen to us. And uh, it's like this is a pretty strong message to get out so that you can actually see it, see what's going to happen, and yeah, you might not get home at Easter. So inattentive driving is probably the one of the most fatal things that we can, and, and causing injuries. If you look at the podcast, uh, you'll see a sequence of events, which is quite amazing. You just don't have the one accident. There's, there's a couple other. I'll let you watch the podcast. Yeah. What were your thoughts when you first you those, you the podcast and, and the documentary? Um, it, it really shook. Uh, I, I originally seen the, the, the footage from the helicopter um, that afternoon, so, and because Crystal hadn't got home by that time, so, and then looking at the, the Commodore, I thought, well, I know the car. And, and then watching the podcast uh, Monday night, uh, just to see the the destruction to the vehicle, which you couldn't see from the air, just wow. I mean, yeah, you, that that shook. That really did. It's frightening. Um, sorry, how difficult was it for you to sort of relive that moment and sort of tell it again in a podcast? Look, every day you you get to relive it. It's like watching someone, someone or someone's family on TV, something happens, you know, a drowning, a, a car accident, you know, anything, push bikes. Um, you go through it every day and if we can help in this podcast to, to save, as, acting, as Assistant Commissioner Ian Parrott said, he said, if we can help someone get home without a fatality over that weekend, this is what we aim for. I've I've got a pretty pretty strong family and uh, and a very very good friend basis. I mean, one of my good mates is is the superintendent of police, and you would have seen him on that. Um, and we we regularly in, in contact, talking, and and like you said, he said, "I'm damned if I know how you do it, Steve." And I think to myself sometimes, "I'm damned if I know I do as well." But you got to keep going. I've got a daughter, Pia, that I've got to be there for her as well. speak to the people, um, parents and children who are going to be travelling over the Easter weekend, what would you be your message to them? Um, when, when Crystal went to leave home on the, on the Sunday, I think it was, um, and I said to her, you know, at the front of the car, I said, whatever you do, drive carefully. If there's a caravan or a truck in front of you, you don't have to pass it. Sit behind it until it's absolutely safe. Um, and then, you know, the, the accident happens. So the idea is, it's five, it, if it takes you an extra five minutes, it makes no difference. You know, it's it's not worth it. And once you once you see that podcast there, you'll definitely think to yourself, yeah, five minutes is not worth it. And and the trauma that you'll you'll have, I'll have, and plus other families will will have is, yeah, it's heartbreaking. Uh, well, like I said, I, I seen it on the telly and, and I, uh, I rang my sister up in Canberra and, and virtually said, you know, we're going to get some news and it's, and it's not going to be good news. And I'll, I'll ring back and, and in the meantime I rang Scotty up and spoke with Scotty and he said, well, I'm not real sure what's happening. Uh, 
I also rang a couple of mates up and said, you better better come around. I, I think we're going to get some news and I might need a couple of mates, mates near me and all that. And, and then Kirsten from uh, Major Crash fronted the front door and and she was terrific, you know, like the, the two officers that come, I'd, I'd hate to have their job, you know. Um, yeah, it, it devastates and you can see what it's done to me. I certainly don't want to have other families having the same thing. Like I said, I watch it on telly, something happens and I, the memories come back and then I feel how those other people have, are going to have to put up with the rest of their lives. Was yeah, she was she was a good kid, um, pretty vibrant. Wanted to be a nurse, um, so that was her ambition. She, we we took her out of the public education system, and and she wanted to uh, go to Saint Aloysius because she said, I know if I go there, my marks will get up for her. So um, she she enjoyed everything, and she was always there for a little bit of a joke and. Yeah, it's it's something you'll, you know, we've we've got the memories, but it'd be better to have a standing right next to me. Yeah, thank you. Any questions for the assistant commissioner? Assistant commissioner, um, is this Easter weekend a particular concern, considering obviously, as was mentioned before, Christmas wasn't as busy. There's more likely to be a lot more people out on the roads. Is, this Easter weekend a, a major concern for the police? Uh, we are concerned about uh, this Easter long weekend because as has been mentioned, as we, we all know, we've all experienced it. Um, you know, travel's been a little bit limited, uh, even if we've just been a bit more cautious about um, going out, not wanting to be quarantined or even to, to catch COVID. So we expect that there'll be a large volume of people and vehicles on the roads uh, right across the Easter weekend. And so what we are doing is we have got uh, Operation Safe Holidays for Easter 2022. There will be uh, police uh, out in uh, every area, including the Metropolitan, with a big focus on, on the regional roads, uh, anticipating that people will be travelling to holiday destinations. Uh, I remind people that uh, every police vehicle uh, can pull you over any time of the day or night, and if you are doing something wrong, uh, that you will be caught. But I also wanted to reiterate what Steve was saying about his message uh, to people this Easter weekend. Five minutes is not going to make much difference to your travel, all right? So don't don't take risks. Wait till it's absolutely safe um, for you to overtake somebody. Um, make sure you have your rest, rest. Sorry, make sure you plan your trip. Make sure you have your rest breaks. You know, these are all basic things and basic messages that we push out um, every single time we push a, put a road safety campaign on. But what we're hoping is is that um, Crystal's legacy will be that there are people out there who go, wow. I, I didn't realise that that is the impact and how broad the impact of her losing her life is on the people who love her, the people around her, the emergency services, the other driver and the other driver's um, employer, uh, my people uh, here in Saipol who have put all this together. You know, the ripple effect on someone losing their life on our roads um, is immense. And I think that this podcast and this video series really brings home the whole picture. You will understand by listening to this podcast what Steve and his family have gone through, what Crystal's friends have gone through, and what the other drivers and emergency services have gone through from this one accident. All right? And we've had 22 lives lost on our roads already this year. 75% um, of them uh, have been on regional roads so far this year. So we're extremely worried about this Easter long weekend, which is why we're launching the podcast to time with this to hopefully make sure it resonates with people when they travel this weekend. You mentioned this was the second podcast that uh, police have done. What's the success you've seen from, from the first one and what do you hope to see from this Yeah, so the, the Holbrook family uh, was a, another road safety campaign that we put together about um, a young lad who was, who was killed by um, his mate who was driving the vehicle and lost control of the vehicle and, and, and killed his mate. Um, it also showed the impact on parents and emergency services workers as well. Uh, the uptake on that particular uh, road safety campaign was very good. Um, the, the intent here is, as Steve said, if he can prevent another parent feeling the way he feels and um, recounting um, of a loss that he has 
as frequently as he does, then that's what he's hoping to achieve. And that's what we're hoping to achieve with this particular podcast, that it really does resonate with people. It's another way of describing the impact and the, um, I guess, the enormity of what this actually means to people. Because you don't really realise what the impact is. As Steve said, you don't think it's going to happen to you. He didn't think it was going to happen to him or his family. But he now you know, lives that and he's been kind enough and brave enough to share that story with us in the hope that somebody else does not have to experience it. Obviously, you said the big focus is the regional roads and again, this year we've seen a, a number of fatalities on our regional roads. Would you like to see something change? It obviously, it keeps becoming an issue every year. What, what needs to change for this to, uh, to be fixed? Um, as with some of our other uh, road safety campaigns, we know that two and three lives lost on regional roads are people who live in the regions. You know, so there has been a bit of a myth that it's metro people who don't know how to drive on country roads who are, who are dying in our roads. The reality is it's people who live in the regions, two thirds of those, uh, you know, are the people who are actually dying on regional roads. So what this is about is about people waking up, people understanding that they have a role to play in this. They have a role to drive safely. They have a responsibility to drive safely. Um, you know, if Steve's scenario and Crystal's scenario is one scenario, but you imagine if you killed somebody else on the road because of your irresponsible behaviour, then you need to live with that yourself. And in all likelihood, you'll end up spending some time in jail. You know, think about the impact that's going to have on your family as well, from the other side of a coin. You know, it's not just one thing here. There's a whole series of impacts that road trauma has on our community and our people. And we're really just trying to find different ways, different messages to get the message through and lower the number of people who are killed on our roads each year. Any questions for the minister? No? Okay. Oh,